Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a really unique camping stove, and this is the Teg Stove. All right, everybody, welcome back. So we're back from the SHOT Show. I still have a few more videos to post, but uh, I've been dying to bring you this. This is really cool. This is a stove that I saw about two years ago, and the price was just ridiculous on it. It was so expensive, and it's kind of innovative, kind of unique, very cool um, premise behind it. But, you know, I have so many camp, stove and it just didn't, camp stoves, and it just didn't feel right to spend that much money on it. I think it was like anywhere from $120 to $140. Anyway, I think the company has sold out their remaining st stock to other companies, and that's where this came from. It is originally by TEG or TEG or TEG Stove, whatever they called themselves, but now they've been rebranded and sold by this company here, Shine Star. So I will leave a link down below after you see the whole video if you think one of these is for you. I believe they're $50 now. So, kind of a cool premise on this, and we're going to explain how it works in a second, but first, I want to set it up and show you what it is. Then we can describe how it works because I can actually show you where things are functioning. So give me a sec to set it up and uh, I'll bring what it What I should have said is give me a second to get it out of its packaging. <laughs> and this does come with it, by the way. It comes with a, uh, a USB cable and the little camo package that it comes in. It does fit tightly in here and uh, makes for a nice little compact package. So let's set it up. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is put the legs out. So, you can push on this and pull your legs down. I'm trying to do this with my left hand. There we go. And I usually keep it on about three there. I don't know if you can see one, two, three. On the fourth one down. Do this the right way. There we go. On the fourth one down. And on the fourth one down. And yes, there's more graceful ways to set this up than I did it. I just kind of... So, anyway, there you go. This thing looks like some kind of um, either video game weapon or component to a rocket system of some kind. <laughs> so, once we set up here, let's get the box out of the way. There's your battery pack right in front. We'll get to that in a second. This does charge the battery using a, a transfer of, a, of cold and hot. We'll get into that in a second. But I want to show you the setup. So this is the setup. This is what it looks like. It takes these little guys, butane. Real simple. You slide it in the bottom. We'll do that now. If you look in the bottom, I don't know if you can see in there because it's kind of dark. You can see the spot for that notch. So we're just going to pop that in there. Place it where the notch is. And twist. And there it is. And you'll smell a little bit of the butane escaping when you do that. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Next up, you're going to want to move these, these guys here. This is your pot stands. So you're going to lift them up and turn them. Now you can turn them short for smaller pans or all the way over for larger pans. Since we're going to be using a large pan today, I am going to keep them all the way open because we're going to be actually cooking on this as well as doing a boil test to see how fast it boils. So let's get into how this stove actually works. Now, one of the biggest problems we have with these butane and isobutane canisters is in cold weather, they're practically useless after a few minutes. The canister will get so cold that it will frost up or you'll have to tip it upside down or whatever, and basically you'll lose power from the stove. The neat part about this and the way it produces energy for this battery bank is the TEG stove draws cold air away from the cylinder and pushes warm air down from this heat sink into the chassis, thus warming the canister doesn't get it super hot. It's not like something's going to explode. It just warms it up enough to keep it from frosting up. So you're going to have a consistent burn here in hot or cold weather. It's never going to get too cold and this is going to be all frosty and you're going to get a little tiny nothing flame out of there. So that's kind of cool. How the energy production works. It's basically a thermoelectric generator. So you're going to get one section of, the, of, a, of a plate in here that is cold, one section of a plate in here that's hot, when those two combine, they will produce energy to charge the battery. You'll see the battery has little, I don't know if you can see that close, that close there, has little uh, things down here, little lights. You can charge this from a micro USB cable. So if it's low and you don't want to burn the stove for no reason at all, you can charge it up when you take it out on a trip. Or you can plug your item in there and charge it. I would recommend a longer charging cable because, of course, you're going to be cooking here. 
and you don't want the water or whatever to splash all over the place. So, it's got its own igniter, which seems to work very well, too. And there you go. You literally turn it on and that's it. You can turn it down. It's not super adjustable, but you can turn it down to simmer. So let me turn off the lights here so you can get a look at that flame. I'll bring you up close to it. Definitely has more flame than most of the little butane stoves I've seen before. So what we're going to do now is do a very quick boil test to see how long it takes to cook, to boil one cup of water. Now I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there, the fan is blowing down. You can actually feel the warm air down here. You'll notice the lights on here. This battery was fully charged. It is charging my cell phone. You can see the little charge symbol up top, that little arrow through the battery. It's at 98%, so I doubt it's going to get it to 100 just boiling water. I have put one cup of water into this pot here. And we are going to use my phone to time it. So while it's charging it, it's going to time it as well. Let me just turn this off so you can hear the fan. Hear the fan? Okay. So now we're going. We're starting the stopwatch. And I'll bring you back when that's done. There you go, and we got 2 minutes and 28 seconds, 2 minutes and 30 seconds, let's say. You'll notice my phone is at 99%, When we plugged in it, it was 98. Turn off that. You'll hear the fan going still. Let's put this back down here, so I don't give you guys a wild ride. <laughs> and there you go, so 2 minutes, 30 seconds, got a cup of water boiled. Not bad for the butane stove, I mean, they're not, they don't have the same BTUs, we'll get into that in a second. But um, next up, I'm going to give you information on how the stove works and a little bit of the specs of it. So you'll still hear the fan running when you're done with it. It will cool it down somewhat, which is kind of nice. Keeps this, you know, warm. And this area cools off a lot quicker. Matter of fact, I can actually touch that without getting burned too bad. So expect you're going to expect about 4.5 to 5 volts output from the stove. The battery is not huge, but it's a continuously charging battery, 3,000 milliamps. So you can top this off before you leave, and you can charge it up either by the stove or by a wall outlet before you go. Um, it is charging up my phone now still, even though it's not, not running. It's at 99%. It's telling me my clock is paused at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to let that finish up. You notice how it's slowly getting quieter and quieter because it's cooling off. I'm going to let that finish up, and we'll finish up what we're doing here. So the measurements and weight, okay, this is about 13.7 inches tall and about 3.5 inches wide across. This fully open is way, way big. That's much bigger. Weighs about 3.5 pounds. So this is not a lightweight Graham Weenie backpacking stove. Would it work for a short trip or car camping? Absolutely. Probably would be a good uh, thing to keep in your car as an emergency way to cook. However, you have to remember, you got to maintain your battery, take it out every couple of months, top it off, whatever. Because I found that when these batteries die, the lithium ion, when they die, sometimes they won't come back or they won't hold a charge as well. So I like to take my stuff out and charge it up every few months or so, um, even with rechargeable lights. So definitely something that would be uh, worthy of car camping or something like that or even an emergency kit in your car. What we're going to do with this now is we're actually going to cook food on it. Um, if you notice, I brought out a larger pan here to fit up there. And because it's my wife's birthday, I'm going to make her breakfast. <laughs> so let's see how well it performs as an actual stove instead of just boiling water. Give me a second to set it up, and I'll put some bacon and eggs and stuff in there, and we'll see how it works. Since I'm going to be cooking bacon in here, I put my phone way over that way. Uh, first thing we're going to do is pop in some bacon. I just got some bacon pieces I've cut in half here. That one didn't really cut, now did it? <laughs> okay, we're going to see how well this works. Get this guy over here. And I'm going to put this on kind of a the lower heat, because I don't want the bacon to burn. And we'll see how well this performs as an actual stove. Now, as for prepping, where would this fit in for prepping for me? Well, you know, it's kind of a tough question, because you kind of have to think, well... 
it's an awesome idea. It's a great little stove. It's great for camping and stuff. But I'm thinking more for home prepping. This wouldn't be a bug out bag item. So um, I'm thinking more for, you know, if you have enough of these cartridges and they are dirt cheap, you can get them for like 12 for $12 in some of the Asian markets in Vegas um, and some of your other Asian markets. Even on Amazon, they're really, really cheap. So if you, can, if you get a good stock of the actual butane canisters and um, you have the ability to charge stuff, which is kind of cool, on a stove you keep put away for emergencies. Again, if you're using this indoors, you want to make sure it's nicely ventilated. You don't want to be putting this uh, carbon monoxide gas in the air without uh, getting yourself uh, some ventilation in the room. So, bacon's cooking along nicely. We're going to cook up the bacon, we're going to make some eggs. We're going to heat up a biscuit and warm it up a little bit, melt some cheese on it, and I'll bring you back with the finished product, and I'll let you know how it performed as a cooking stove. So far, it seems to be doing pretty well. Remember, this is the first time I've used this to actually cook something. I've boiled water on it a bunch of times. So, see you in a few minutes. So keeping it on the lower simmer kind of height um, of the burner, I seem to be doing a really good job on the bacon. I definitely need a taller tripod and a link to the GoFundMe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> This seems like it's so high. It really isn't that high. Like I said, it's 13 and a half inches off of the table. But um, normally when I review stuff, it's down here and it's a smaller item. So, I mean, am I telling you to go out and buy this thing? Nah. You can if you want. I got it because I thought it was cool. Um, it's definitely an option against the, uh, gosh, I can't think of the name now. I want to say BioLite, whatever those other stoves. It's an option that's a little bit more affordable than that. It does work very well, and it, you will get an hour and a half burn time off a canister of propane. However, it is not, that you cannot use this any other way than with that canister of propane. BioLite, I think it is, where you put the wood in and it charges up the battery. So it is a different approach to it, and it is really compact and nice when it's in its case. It's just kind of heavy and, and long for a backpack. So, bug out bag, no. If you, this is all you have in your house for emergencies. Um, you know, and you want a nice little stove that can also, hey, charge a tablet, charge up your laptop, whatever, while you're cooking breakfast in the morning during a power outage. Awesome item. Really, really cool item. So, let me finish up breakfast here, and I'll bring you back when it's all done. All right, bacon's done, and you know, that's pretty darn good for a stove that runs on either high or low. That's pretty darn well-cooked bacon. I'm going to put in the eggs now with the bacon grease in there already. Then, we'll toss in a little cheese with that. And uh, heat up the biscuit. We'll have a nice breakfast going here. All right, we got the bacon going. We'll turn off the stove. Got that nicely heated up. We'll put in this. Let's see how this turns out. Let me put this down somewhere where it won't melt things. There we go. There we are. A little bit of cheese, a little bit of eggs. And yes, like I told you before, that will run for a while to cool down the, uh, the um, canister in there. So, there you go. The best I can do with a, doing this the opposite side of where I'm used to working. But I think it came out pretty good, and I think it cooked. The bacon really surprised me. I expected it to burn the bacon because it's either high or low. There's no in-between. So I thought it was going to take forever or burn it up real quick. So, let me go give this to her for her birthday breakfast. And uh, I will bring you back and we'll finish up what I think of the stove. All right, so my wife is busy enjoying her breakfast and uh, it's cooled down a little bit. It does cool down very quickly because of that fan feature, which is nice. Um, it is still charging. I believe I'm 100% here, yep. So in the short time that I've done this video, I didn't pay attention to what time it was when I started, but it's been plugged in since then and it's fully charged up. Now, not much of a challenge to take it from 98% to 100 but still, it does work, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's still full because we were running it while we were charging. You know, for, for bug out, no, definitely not, not for bug out bag. If you're bugging out in a vehicle, yeah, that's a pretty cool and handy item to have. Um, for a bug out location, where maybe you're on solar and you're watching your power usage, having something like that to recharge your USB devices is pretty awesome. For, say, home preparedness, again, with proper ventilation, really cool. Uh, I plan on, next time there's a power outage, digging this stove out and giving it a go. You know, I always take my Coleman stoves out, 
but uh, definitely would have no problem taking this stove out and giving it a try. Um, removing the propane canister, again, very simple. Just reach up in there, pull it out, the butane. I keep calling it propane. Um, and it is warm up here. Not hot, but warm. So it does warm this up. So even in cold weather, if you're going somewhere that's really, really cold, it might be worth the extra three and a half pounds to carry that with you. So if you've got a good supply of these, which you can amass cheaply, and you, you know, you're going to be outdoors or you know, even, even bugging out, you know, it's not a bad thing to have. Um, it is, again, limited because once this is gone, this doesn't work. You need the propane for it, the butane. Again, I called it propane. You need the butane with it. That's why I think this is more suited to home preparedness and maybe camping trips. But definitely home preparedness. Because, you know, I could go on Amazon right now and buy up bunches of these for 50 bucks and really have a good long, you know, good long time. Now, if you're going to be cooking in spurts, kind of like I did, I boiled water, turned it off. Cooked breakfast, turned it off. 1.5 hours will last a good long time, you know, especially if you plan to go with freeze-dried foods, um, like, say, Thrive or any of the other, you know, Mountain House, whatever. Last a good long time. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm kind of bummed that Teg Stove doesn't seem to exist anymore. Um, these other companies are selling it. It's still branded Teg Stove on the side by Tegology. But these other companies, I guess, maybe bought up the remaining stock. This one here is Shine Star. And I will put a link down below. They're 40, 50 bucks. I mean, 50, 60 bucks, actually. They're not horrible. Um, I really wanted one because I like the concept. I thought it was really cool looking and neat. But I collect stoves. So, <laughs> you know, there's that too. You can do just as good with an $11 Lixada stove or maybe two of them cooking your breakfast as you can with this. However, you do have the nice base and pot support up here. It is a fairly sturdy, well-made stove. It does kind of look cool. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like some kind of weapon system. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out this link down below. I will put a link where I purchased this on Amazon. Um, don't forget to check out our Amazon store. If you're not interested in buying anything, just click that link and shop as you normally would. Don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link. Again, if you want some freeze-dried food, goes really good with this stove. <laughs> You can pick up some freeze-dried food. And don't forget to register on the Olight link. We have a sale coming up pretty soon, so don't forget to get registered over on the Olight uh, link, my Olight link down below. And uh, you'll be ready if they're giving away any freebies, and you'll be able to get some great deals. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.